Okay, hello and welcome here to our webinar uh, from Thronus International. Today, um, we are going on the topic of integration possibilities of our products and solutions. So, um, be prepared for to see what is possible um, to use uh, from Fronios so to integrate the sector heat and uh, hot water generation even um, more efficient. So, for this, I will introduce you into today's team. We have here today uh, Sandic uh, David, which is um, today in the chat and at the end of the webinar will um, present the questions he sent to us. And also, uh, I'm Robert Reimbrecht, also trainer here at Ronios. I'm happy to be here as a host and uh, present you the webinar today. I don't want to go in the agenda into much detail, so, but um, for you a short overview, what is the plan for today's webinar? I will give you some general information about uh, PV heat integration, what is possible and maybe um, what is the best solution for you and your customer. Possibilities in heat integration, a short overview, but also uh, an, an insight in the installation and commissioning of these solutions. Also, the topic of heat pump types and heat pump integrations into a PV system are um, topics of today's webinar. So, let us jump directly into the first topic. So, the general information about PV heat integration. For this, um, it's for sure important on which um, place on earth you live or your customer lives. So I present you now an example from Austria. In Austria, if you have a an, an heat pump system, for sure um, you need for the heating energy more uh, energy during the winter months and also in the months, um, I would say in the spring and the autumn, rather than in the summer months. So there is, uh, I would say, some integration types which enhance the self-sufficiency really uh, by a lot. So um, for sure, if you're only thinking about uh, heating the PV in Austria, then you have the small problem that the gain of the PV system is really little in the winter months. But if you talk about hot water integration and also cooling in the summer, you see here uh, the consumption on the one side and also the production on the other side matches even better. So um, also if a customer says it doesn't make sense to heat with PV in summer, maybe um, in the winter time, maybe that's um, true in one aspect, but to integrate the hot water generation is also in Austria really, um, I would say, perfect solution. And also for sure for hot summer months, um, integrating the sector cooling um, into um, the PV system is a great thing. So what are the um, possibilities, the considerations? So the first thing is you increase your self-sufficiency if you talk about hot water generation, cooling and also um, heating. You have fuel savings, for sure you uh, save a lot of fuel, that's also the topic why this I would say um, topic of heat generation for PV is uh, exploding the last months. Uh, I would say during um, the that's caused by the um, really high energy prices caused by the Ukraine war. So um, also this is a, a factor which increases this topic um, or the importance of this topic even more. The conserving of primary heating system, for sure. Uh, from in my situation, um, I don't need my primary heating system uh, to generate hot water during, I would say, April to um, November, October, November. So in these times, I switch off my heat pump completely. Also, this is possible, and so I heat, uh, I save some uh, working hours of the heat pump. For sure, you need matched components, and also here Fronius offers you a lot because we offer you a holistic solution. Uh, emission reduction on the other side also helps here, and um, it's also for safety if you have a second source of heat water generation into your system, one with the primary heating system, maybe one with the um, systems or solutions I will introduce in some minutes. Um, you have for sure, a um, um, second source of heat, so you, it's more safe. But what is, I would say, the most um, important thing to think about is please take a closer look into the, the topic of planning. 
and how you want to, to do it uh, exactly. Also, sometimes there's a heating specialist needed if the heating system uh, or hot water generation system at the customer isn't maybe that easy. And also, please be aware, if you integrate the sector heat you, and you have a PV system in combination, you have to do some settings on the primary heating source. Otherwise, these two components working against each other and not um, hand in hand. So what are the solutions? I will introduce you today um, the heat water usage by means of load management. We at Fronius have um, in all our, I would say, state of the art products, uh, the Gen24, but also the Snap Inverter series. If you have a data manager card inside, you have um, the possibility to get four um, IOs to switch um, with the use of a 12 volt relay a load. So you can directly switch on loads or switch off loads depending on the use case um, regarding the um, inverter production or uh, regarding the surplus you have at the PV system. If you want to increase, I would say, the uh, self-sufficiency even more, um, it's also we have a product, the Fronius own pilot. The Fronius own pilot is the big advantage here. We have a watt accurate control of only consumers. So here, for example, you can connect heating rods. So I would say a heating rod connected to the own pilot for uh, hot water generation is the 90% use case. But for sure, you can also control other ohmic consumers, like um, if you have a really simple infrared panel or you have underfloor heating or wall heating systems, if they're ohmic um, consumers, you can control them via the own pilot. And also here, you have the big advantage that's watt accurate, so every watt is measured and controlled, and so the surplus will go directly into the sector heating. And the other thing, for sure, um, the topic of heat pumps also increased over the last um, years, and also for sure uh, in the last year, um, especially. So um, to connect a heat pump into the PV system, or to combine these two sectors, it's also a really big topic. And also here, Fronius offered um, several solutions how you can interconnect the heat pump to the PV system control, and so you get a, I would say, great solution at the end of the day. And here we have two possibilities. One is with Smart Grid Ready. So SG Ready is an input that the heat pump, later on I will explain it a little bit more detail, so you can give the heat pump a control, now uh, switch or now increase the target temperature and switch on for two hours or so. So you can do uh, some control with this smart grid ready control. But there are also some heat pumps um, which gets the information of the surplus via the Fronis PV system and can modulate its power um, to the level of the I would say surplus. So it that's, I would say, the same concept as we have with the own pilot, but with the control of a heat pump. Also, this is possible later on. I will show you here one example. So, but let us start with the very beginning. So, the heat integration by means of the Fronius load management. I already explained it. For this, we need a Gen24 inverter or a Snap inverter with a data manager, um, 2.0 card, and then you get four load management outputs. And you can control um, these outputs via the inverter power or via the surplus information. So for this, you, I would always uh, recommend a Fronius smart meter into the system to use the surplus control uh, function. But if you not have um, a Fronius smart meter um, built into the system, you can use the inverter power. For sure, inverter power doesn't mean it's the surplus because you know in the household you have other consumers uh, also working independently. So I would always go for surplus uh, control in this um, situation, but it's um, it's how you um, can manage it and uh, what's the best situation for the customer. You can choose between these two control methods. Later we also show you where you can set this up. So what, which scenarios are then possible? Um, we talk about IO output on the inverter. So you also need a 12 volt relay, which is then switched. And this 12 volt relay is then switching on loads on or off. So I 
Um, bring here now uh, some scenarios, um, what you can do. So you can use a single phase heating rod via one relief, so you can control it. You can do it with two. So two single phase heating rods are controlled then via two release. Then three, a three phase heating rod is controlled via three release, or you can use this output for the um, smart grid ready control. Also, this is possible. For sure, you can also switch on uh, pool pumps, or uh, you can use it to um, give the air conditioning an, an impulse so that they have to switch on. You can really use it uh, any way you want. How does it look like? So here uh, we have the example with a single phase heating rod. So we have the heating rod placed in the hot water storage, and we have here a 12 volt relay, which is then controlling this uh, hot water heating rod. So the PV generator is generating a surplus. And after a set level, um, this relay is then um, um, closed, and then the heating rod switches on with uh, the full power. If a certain limit is uh, not reached any longer, so if the surplus is going down, then heating rod is switching off again. So this is, I would say, a really easy solution, and it's also really cheap because it costs you the heating rod, a really simple one, and also uh, a 12 volt relay, and you are for sure your uh, installation cost as an installer for the end customer. You can also think about two heating rods, maybe one in the hot water storage, one in the buffer storage. Maybe you have in the hot water storage um, one heating rod in the, in the bottom, one in the top. You can think about the solution which uh, suits the customer needs best. But also controlling a control of two heating rods is also possible. And if you have a three phase heating rod, you could also uh, use the three phases to switch on on certain thresholds. For this, I will bring you up here as a show, small schematic. So here you see if the threshold for the phase one is reached, then the uh, phase one is switched on. So the power of the, of the um, first phase of the heating rod is active. After a second threshold is reached, also phase two is switching on. So if the threshold is not longer um, available, you switch off this heating rod. If it's available again, it's switched on. And also if a third um, threshold is reached, also here you can switch on phase three on this three-phase heating rod. Um, there are, I would say, typical three-phase heating rods have nine kilowatts of power in total, but there are also smaller uh, heating rods available with a, a smaller, um, um, I would say, power per uh, phase. Mm. So um, you can then choose the right heating rod for your customer. Please be here aware um, that uh, for this, for sure, you need a heating rod with a neutral connection. If you want to switch the heating rod or three phases at once with a three phase relief, also this is possible. Um, but please be aware if you want to switch on every phase uh, after each other, so you need the neutral connection so that um, this is working. So how you can configure it? Uh, for this, I um, bring up here uh, O's of our inverter. So the first thing is to wiring it up. Um, for this, you can use, for example, one of our white papers on our homepage. You can use the user manual. Um, we have a lot of documents where uh, the schematics are shown, but um, in short, you need the I.O. and the ground connection for the release. Here we get 12 volts output if the threshold is reached. So you have to search a release. We have some recommendations, but um, the only re really recommendation um, I would give out is search for a release with a small um, power for switching on. So um, we need a release for the data manager of 3.6 watts and for the Gen 24 of 6 watts. So that is the, I would say, most important thing. If you search for the relay, search for a relay with a small wattage on the primary set, on the control set. Then for sure, you have to do the settings on the inverter after the cabling. So for this, uh, please go under functions and IOs in the inverter menu and here go to load management. Be sure that this um, um, switch here is switched, so you have to activate it, and then you can decide for the outputs. 
So you can um, choose the output you want. For sure, you have to use one I.O. and input output. Um, but you could um, choose for load management one, pin two, for example. But I won't uh, really recommend it. Please always use the default ones. Why? Because if there is a problem, you call our tech support. The tech support colleagues is knowing the default pins. So for measurements and all these kind of things, we stated everywhere our default configuration. So if you're wiring it up, I would take a look um, or I would always use the default pins here for the user management. And default, you see it here, pin one for load one, pin two for load two, pin three for load three, and for load four, here we need pin zero. But um, for sure you can you could change it if needed, but I would not uh, recommend this. The next thing, um, we set up the right I.O., so the input output is set now, but we have to set the thresholds. And the thresholds you can set under load management settings, so energy management, and in this chapter you have to go to load management, and here you can see um, then the loads. Mm -hmm. So you have settings for load one, two, three, and four. And for um, load one, for example, here at uh, do the example with um, heating rod L1. It's controlled via power um, power production. Here I would only rec or I would recommend a surplus if you have a from a smart meter in the system. Then you set up the thresholds. In this case, because I have here power production of the inverter choosed, there is not the possibility to choose between fit in and also consumption values. Here is only the inverter power used, but if you set in here surplus, you have the possibility to also choose by a feed in of 3200 watts. Uh, this output is switched on and it's only switched off after a certain limit is um, undergone. In this case, it's uh, 200 um, watts. You can set these thresholds um, for your situation. For sure, it depends on the wattage of the heating rod or the consumer you are using here. We also have some really great um, um, control methods because um, you have the minimum duration per signal. If we don't talk about a um, heating rod, a heating rod is not really critical load. You can switch it on, off, on, off. You can do it thousands of times. But if you use a motor or something like that, like a um, pool pump, please set up here value so the starting um, cycles I reduced them because you know if you have a really cloudy uh, summer day, um, you have maybe hundreds of, of, of starting cycles. So here I would always go for um, some minutes, I would say. If you have a, a motor behind, set up 15 minutes. If you have a heating rod, one, two, three, four minutes would be sufficient. Maximum duration per day. Sometimes it only makes sense to let this um, um, consumer run a certain hours. So in this case, I set up 10 hours is the um, useful day. The heating rod is a really great consumer. Why? Because if the temperature is reached of the hot water storage, for example, it switches off automatically. So you don't have to think about uh, the switch off of this, uh, of this heating rod um, after a certain amount of hours. And there's also a desired um, duration. Let us imagine the heating rod in the hot water storage is the only um, um, heating source available. So I would set up for sure at least at a certain time, a certain duration per day uh, value. Why? Because then I can be sure if the energy doesn't come from the sun, then the inverter is switching off the heating rod for sure, then it needs uh, energy from the grid. But you can be sure you have a certain energy inside the heat water storage every day. So you see, we have a really lot of settings. They are not really tricky, so you only have to know them and to use them. And I'm sure uh, with this, you can really create uh, great solutions already. So sometimes it's, I would say, um, needed to get to the next step. So the next step in our um, point of view would be the Fronius own pilot. For the Fronius own pilot, what are we doing here? Here we can control um, uh, ohmic uh, consumer 
from, I would say, um, zero to three or 900 watts to nine kilowatts of power. Um, and here you can do it, I would say, um, on a wattage level. So you can really um, um, exactly setting up the value um, which is measured as surplus via the Fronius mapper. Here also significant increases of the self-consumption can be reached for sure. Uh, in these cases, also the hot water usage of the persons living in the house are uh, having here um, a big influence. It's a also fully integratable in systems uh, with a PV storage, uh, electrochemical storage system like a PVD battery. And also on the other side, if you have an uh, um, electric car, you can also combine it with a watt pilot, the from this watt pilot to load this car. And here also you can set the priorities. So you see, we have here for all these solutions, I would say, or for all these situations at the customer side, the perfect solution, um, which combines them in a holistic system um, and what is is do what is the umpilot doing it, it's control um, it's also possible to control uh, a heat pump for example with smart grid ready directly from the own pilot also this is possible i will show you later on how we can do this why i should now use a own pilot um, because uh, Robert showed us already, we have the load management uh, switching off the whole um, uh, heating rod. Why I need now the own pilot? I would say here is an example why you could need it on a cloudy day. So that's a day uh, on my PV system um, some days ago. So you see there is some, uh, the red areas are areas where the own pilot generated heat. And you see there was, there was some heat generation. But if I compare it uh, now to a system where I set a, a certain threshold to switch on the heating rod, my heating rod would never be switched on on this day. So that's the big advantage of an pilot. The pilot uh, don't need this big threshold of the uh, full um, power of the heating rod. You can also put in 200 watts, 300 watts, 7 watts, so you can control the energy. And so that's the big difference. Also on a cloudy day, you can generate some heat water with your PV surplus. What components are needed? In this situation, for sure you need a Fronius inverter, 1024 or a snap inverter. For a snap inverter, please take a look. You need a um, data manager 2.0 card inside. Um, exactly. Why? Because you have to connect the Fronius smart meter to the system. Here in this case, there's only um, systems with a Fronius smart meter can work here in combination because we need the surplus information for the control. So also you can build in a temperature sensor. Here a PT-1000 can be used. And later on I'll show you the advantages of this. And uh, for sure you need a heating rod connected to the inverter. Also here you can use a uh, one phase or a single phase heating rod up to three kilowatts of power, and you can use three phase heating rod up to nine kilowatts of power. So these are the possibilities you have here. But we also have a uh, relay inside the uh, umpilot, so also you can build systems with several um, heating rods. In the next slide, I will show you what is possible. To take a look if the own pilot is suitable for your situation or of the customer situations, I would really, um, um, I would say, give it a tip. Take a look in our uh, Fronius own pilot user menu. Why? Because in there you see a lot of examples how you can set the own pilot and also uh, which scenarios uh, you can build. And also with all settings you need, also the schematics, all these things you can find directly in the user manual of the own pilot. So here we have described a single phase heating rod up to three kilowatts, three phase heating rod from 900 watts to nine kilowatts, a single phase heating rod up to three kilowatts in combination with a heat pump integration by us market ready. Also the same thing, but switching on maybe um, a primary heat source, two heating rods, three phase and a single phase or three phase heating rods up to nine kilowatts. So here you see there are really a lot of 
scenarios um, mentioned in the user manual. You can also be creative and do more than it, but for sure, please um, then uh, read the full manual to get an, an insight what is possible. Here, I show you a picture of my system. So you see here, that's the thing I mentioned in winter time. Um, the production is maybe uh, not that big, but also the consumption um, going down. So here you see the production is going down in this system. That's not mine, that's another one um, where there is no heat pump in the winter, um, increasing the consumption. But also in this system, plus 90% um, of the own consumption um, was reachable. Here for sure, it is really, if you want to calculate this value, what is the own product really, um, um, I would say, bringing a benefit to the customer? In Solar Web, you can do a simulation. So if you have already a PV system running, um, also with some uh, from a smart meter data, you can go into the system via Solar Web and start a simulation. And then you could analyze if I was or if I would install the own pilot a year in the past, then the outcome would be this now. Also, a simulation is uh, possible in uh, Solar Web. So please try this. It's also a really great um, solution you offer. So the own consumption increase. Here an example how you see uh, how does it work. So you see here in this time the output of the heating rod was exactly the surplus. There is if the PV system is bigger than um, the controllable load connected to the envelope, then it will for sure uh, reach some some limit here. In this case, I have only three kilowatt uh, heating rod, so I only can. Um, maximize use uh, three kilowatts of, of surplus usage. But you see here the temperature of the PT1000 and also you see here the increase of the temperature. So that's also some, um, I would say, a tip from the practice. A PT1000 costs around 15 euros maybe, so please always integrate one into the system to get the customer also the information of the temperatures in the storage, in the hot water storage, and also for you, if you find adjust the values, maybe a year later, and you want to charge for this energy management, something to the customer, having temperature data really helps you. Okay, how you set this up? Here the wiring diagram. On the left side, if you open the web pilot, own pilot, sorry, you will see here a connection bar. Here on the left side, you have the AC input. Then you have on the right side, the AC output for phase one. Then you have one for phase two and one for phase three. And here is the relay I talked about. So in, if you want to use Smart Grid Ready directly um, uh, without the, the use of an external relay, and you have your own pilot, here a relay is already built in. So you can use this relay here to directly connect the Smart Grid Ready input of a heat pump. How this scenario has to be set up. I will show you the setup of this um, situation really short. The first thing for sure, you have to set up the primary heater you connected, so the, the uh, data of the heating rod. In this case, um, you can set it on automatic. So here, the on pilot is measuring the wattage of the connected heat rod automatically. Then you can set up heater two. In this case, heater two is the setting of smart grid ready heat pump. After a feed in of three kilowatts of power, then please uh, give the signal to the heat pump to increase the target values and the temperature target values. And please stop the signal if you have a consumption in this case of 500 watts. So that's a really great um, advantage to have the built-in release in the own pilot. Why? because the envelope mostly is directly next to the heat pump control unit in the technic room. So it's a really uh, good thing to have it directly next to each other and to connect it only with short uh, cables here. There's also a um, third um, control you can use. So there's the temperature sensor. If you have this installed, you also get these settings here. So you can set up um, for example, a uh, Legionella presentation. You can set up here some hours when this has to be done. You can um, also adapt the day curve 
So if it's the only primary heating source, if the own pilot is um, generating all the hot water, please be sure to use here this settings to make sure that um, there is energy, um, I would say, brought into the hot water tank via the own pilot also when the weather is not uh, okay. Because if it's the primary heating source, the water would be cold if you not set up here um, some target values for some, uh, I would say, hours of the day. Exactly. So you can also set up a maximum temperature. Normally, the heating rod has a bimetal sensor in it, so you have the maximum temperature. You control it directly with this, um, I would say, um, control on the heating rod itself. But for sure, you can also set up it twice, also once in the own pilot settings to be um, on the safe side. You see also here, really a lot is possible. Um, so um, I would always give you the, the hint, um, try it first. Can I control the heating rod directly? If I want to increase the usage um, or the self-efficiency, use the, the own pilot. And then for sure is also the possibility if you have a smart um, heat pump, I use the own pilot if the, the modulation of the upper power also the heat pump can do, then for sure um, you can also use this. The next slide will show you here um, the topic of heat pump integration. So, heat pumps, um, I would say you have to really think about if you connect a PV system into a household or you install it and there is a heat pump already working, you have to think about the controls on the heat pump. Why? If the heat pump was installed before the hot water uh, expert or the, I would say the, the heating expert asked the customer when um, you go to a shower, then the customer normally says at six o'clock. So you have to set up the heat pump in a, a mode where in the morning it is um, generating all the heat for the day. If you have a PV system, that's not a good idea. Why? Because then in the early morning, the hot water generation was done by the grid and not during the day with the surplus of the PV. So for this situation, I would also always give you the advice to think about the settings on the heat pump. So, um, so the heat pump is not automatically integrated. Um, normally it's outside temperature controlled if you talk about uh, heating. And this um, leads also for sure to a high demand outside the, I would say, day hours. So where PV generation can be, um, is normally here. So in these situations, if you use it also for heating, for my heat pump, I set up a reduced working mode during the night hours and during the day, I increase the working mode. So that's the easiest setting you can do. And so the heat pump is automatically running most of the times in full power during the day. And this is a great thing because during the day also the outer temperatures are higher, so the efficiency of the heat pump is higher and also there is the solar gain at these times. So that's a really easy setting you can set up at, I would say, nearly every heat pump. So, um, so what is a possibility you can do? Also here you see, here the heat pump was set up to a level. It's also, um, I would say, a bad situation, but the hot water generation was done in the night hours. So if I set up the, the heat pump in a, uh, in a mode so that the hot water generation is normally done once a day, maybe at the end of the, the, the day, uh, during the sun hours, you can be sure that there is some um, self-sufficiency or some surplus usage for hot water control. Also, if the weather isn't really that great. Also, here you see, I reduced the night, um, the wattage of the heat pump during the night, and then I increased it during the day. So here, these peaks are caused from the heat pump, um, by um, working full power uh, to hot to heat up my house. Also, for sure, in winter times you can think about the the delta T. So, what is the when the heat pump should take over um, to produce uh, some energy? Because if you not set, I would say, a minimum temperature at the heat pump or hot water, it can be if it's one week like this today. Um, 
for sure the hot water will be colder than you want it. So also this value can be optimized. If the heat pump is generating up to 55 degrees Celsius the hot water um, when it's needed, then for sure it, there is no really um, place for optimization here. But if you set this down here to a reasonable le level, then the heat, then the, the um, heat pump control has some potential to work during the day hours. It, um, here's a little bit complicated, but but the things I want to show you is if you have no smart grid ready, not as um, a smart heat pump control, um, do some controls on the heat pump um, directly to reduce the energy usage during the night and increase it during the day. This is the things I want to tell you here. If you have a heat pump with smart grid ready or you have a modulating heat pumps, I will show you what you can do here. So when smart grid ready, what is smart grid ready? Smart grid ready, um, I would say in Austria nearly every heat pump has it because we need it for um, the subs, uh, subsidies we have for this um, um, heat pumps. So there is a I would say two connections. If they are shorted, then heat, the smart grid ready is active in the heat pump. And what this means have also to be set up in the heat pump control. Um, for example, for my heat pump at home, I could set up a higher target value for hot water. So the normal target value would be 55 degrees. And if the smart grid ready input is coming, I could increase it to 65 degrees, for example. That's a, a possible the target value you can adjust. And also you can adjust a minimum um, working uh, hours. So you can say, if it's market ready is coming, then higher target values and also run at least one hour, for example. These settings I can set up. And here you see it in the diagram. So here's a threshold set up in the low management settings we saw um, earlier. And after this, threshold is reached, the smart grid ready signal is, for example, uh, active at least for uh, half an hour or long two hours, depends on how much uh, energy you want to uh, put into the storage. And then um, you see here, um, it comes also the second time in this situation and uh, is giving the heat pump um, the, I would say, a control input. So, in this case, you connect the smart grid ready input of the heat pump with the load management from Bronius uh, and connect it via this. Please be aware, if you're not using the Bronius own pilot, you need a 12 volt release to do so. This increases the operation of the heat pump in defined thresholds uh, after defined thresholds are reached and also um, Please be aware, it's not maybe the optimum because here in this example, you see if the threshold is reached at the afternoon, it can be that the heat pump is now generating full power, but maybe the energy from the sun is going down. So it's it's better, I would say really better than not having smart grid ready, but uh, the most efficient um, heat pump control would be for sure the usage of smart heat pumps. I will show you. Uh, later on. Also, if you're interested, uh, because it's a really important topic, um, we think, we also created a white paper. You can find it on our homepage or in Google. Connection of a heat pump to the Fronius Energy Management System. With this title, you can easily find our white paper and take a look how it is done in detail. Modulating heat pumps. Um, please be aware there are not every heat pump of a manufacturer are modulating. So there's, they have, um, I would say, a portfolio and sometimes only five to 10% of all the models have this functionality. But if you have it, it's a really great option because then they're modulating. So the heat pump can control its, its consumed power, um, I would say continuously or in a certain um, area. And like here, you can adapt the heat pump power to the surplus of the energy uh, of the PV system. So that would be, I would say, uh, the nicest integration type you can choose. It looks like nearly the same like with the 
the own pilot, but in this case, for sure, you have the advantage. A heat pump also have the efficiency um, gain by being a heat pump. So, you know, you put one kilowatt in, get three kilowatts out um, of thermal power if the outside temperature is high enough. So, um, here, the heat pump power can be adapted and its um, power consumption can be adapted to the PV generation. This increased the own consumption for sure. It's reduced the grid consumption on the other side. And also you um, have to be sure that this heat pump um, the customer has can really be used in the combination. For this, um, we talk for sure with the heat pump manufacturers and we have here on our homepage also a list of compatible heat pump manufacturers. But please be aware, for, for example, if you want to use a Bosch, uh, heat pump um, system, take a look onto the homepage and also on the user manual of the Bosch system if it really can be used in combination with the Fronius system because you know there are really hundreds and thousands different uh, heat pump types outside in the field so you have really to check if exactly this heat pump of the customer uh, really um, can be used. For this, I show you an example. We also showed last year at the Intercellar. Um, so here we uh, used the example with the combination of a Bosch heat pump. So that's also a modulating heat pump. Here you see, for example, the CS7000 AEW series um, can be used. And here the inverter, sorry, the inverter is connected on the one side to the same network as the heat pump is. And then if you have here a control unit that's uh, from Bosch, then the heat pump can adjust its output power um, on the surplus information of the system. Also the Bosch system is, I would say, a really great solution because here we also got some, um, in the app, the full integration of the Fronis PV system, also with storage information, all these kind of things. There are for sure uh, others, also in the field which have great solutions but um, I have experience with this one so I can bring you here the example. So what is important here? Also here I'm going to show you some important settings you have to set up. For sure you have to be sure that all the components, the Fronius inverter, the um, in this case Bosch uh, energy control unit and also the heat pump are connected in the same network. Please also check the network if the ports are uh, rightly uh, set that so that these components can be communicated to each other. And then you have to set up, um, if you talk about a um, snap inverter, um, here you see the snap inverter settings, the TCP settings. So to get the information and to control the inverter in a certain way, there has to be a, a Modbus TCP connection set up. In this case, that are the settings. So you set up here TCP. We need the Modbus port 502. And then the SunSpec model types have to be set on float. That's it for the half of, of the settings. And then for sure, you have to activate also the Solar API um, to, I would say, fully get all the information to um, the Bosch Energy Management Control. And then that's it. So. It can be done, I would say, really easy if you know what you have to do. But also, please be aware, um, normally the heat pump manufacturer has a own manual how a Fronis system can be included into its system. And then also these statements are, are shown there. Also, I got the screenshots here directly from the Bosch manual. And so the Bosch manual shows in detail what to do on the heat pump side. And for sure, these two small settings on the inverter side here. So that's also, I would say, can be done uh, really easily. What is important for sure, inverter has to be connected to the same network as a control unit or as the heat pump. So that's here really important. So the summary, today you hear really a lot how you can use load management from Fronius uh, to control loads, how you can use the own pilot and also how you can integrate heat pumps. So to sum it up, I would say it's easy. It's also easy to retrofit. So also for you, um, you can do it also with existing systems. 
So if you have some spare time now, I would say in bad weather situations where you don't can go uh, on the roof, maybe you go in the cellar and set up here energy management for the customer. So that's a great thing also to um, work on times where the weather doesn't allow uh, PV integration on the roof, for example. It's economic um, for, it's um, also economic in the change over months if we talk about heating um, and also for hot water generation the whole year. Also, I don't bring it up, but uh, I would say nowadays uh, heat pumps also allow a cooling of the household in the summer times. And also, you know, if you also integrate the sector cooling into PV, the self-efficiency will be even higher than only with heat integration and hot water generation integration. The longer service life of the primary heating system, for sure, as my example I told you before, my um, heat pump doesn't have to run the whole summer. And also, it's, I would say, low investment. If you start with the load management, you only need the heating rod and a 12-volt release. So I would say solutions for the end customer could be offered for 500 euros or maybe even cheaper. It depends on your uh, how many working hours you need for the solution. So amortization can be done, I would say, really fast. Also in the times nowadays, because imagine in Austria, the price of the natural gas was uh, quadrupled. Um, so you can imagine the uh, amortization time also um, shrunk down to really interesting uh, numbers. And for sure, optional, um, we talked about maybe one he heating rod integration in the hot water storage. Why not also integrate uh, the buffer storage, for example, for room heating using a modulating heat pump or Combine it also with a uh, battery storage. Also, these adaptions can be um, think of. Today, I only brought you, I would say, a small uh, insight uh, of this topic. We also have a full day training on the integration of the sector heat and also combination with the topic of immobility. So, if you're interested, you can register on our homepage for a full day training here in Austria and Wales. Um, for sure, normally that's um, pure uh, highly inventive, but uh, sometimes it doesn't make sense to drive this long distance. So in this case, we also have an online training available for you. So here we enlarge this topic on around two hours. And also for sure, we have a lot of um, white papers uh, regarding this topic. Connecting a heat pump, for example, or the Fronius envelope manual. So there are really a lot of manuals and uh, you can check for free for sure and see what the best solution for the customer could be. Okay, so now I would say we are at the time when we can um, take a look on your questions. So um, for sure you can send me also now your questions you have on this topic. I will now go, go through the questions I already um, arrived. So David, um, colleagues on the other side here on the chat. Um, do we arrive? Are there some questions here? Yeah, um, thank you, Robert, for your excellent presentations. Um, actually, we had um, one interest question maybe um, for all the participants today. It would be interesting. Um, the question was um, when Fronius Partner and Installer has access to remote settings, so they can do uh, all these settings from their office? That's a really great question. Um, that would be for sure a really great feature um, to control the inverter settings from, I would say, outside the same network. Um, but you can imagine we're producing some gigawatts of power every year. So we have to take some, I would say, safety measures to per hit unwanted control over our systems. So uh, maybe you uh, read the book Blackout. Here, maybe there's um, smart meters of the, um, of the utilities are hacked in this kind of scenario. So if all the Fronius inverter in Europe would be shut down at the same time, I would say maybe in the summertime we have a Blackout. So to prevent this, um, we have to set up here really high safety levels. And that's the reason why this feature is not available now and also not in the near future because we have also to set up 
a really, really high safety level on this topic, so that it's not possible for a third party to um, get access to our inverters. But nevertheless, there are some workarounds for sure. You can um, control the, I would say, smart device of your customer via TeamViewer, for example. For sure, that's not the great solution. You go to TeamViewer on the smart device of the customer, and then you connect to the uh, PV system. You can also set up the network of the customers in a way, you know, the proxy and VPN settings, so that your device is thinking it is in the same network, but it's physically uh, only connected by the internet. Also via, I would say, special network settings, you can achieve this. There are some solutions, but there is not, I would say, a remote control button in the Fronius app where you can control the invert. So sorry for that, but I think it gives you some uh, workarounds what you can use. So it is possible, but not out of the box. And the reason is due to safety reasons. Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks, Robert. Um, for now, there are no further questions uh, in the chat, but uh, as usual, uh, we will stay online, uh, but mute our microphones. And if there are any uh, questions left, um, feel free to ask us in the chat. Perfect. Also, um, I will say thanks for your participation. I was really happy to have you here and give you some information about the heat integration. Please, um, if you're interested, take a look on our homepage for further trainings or for documents regarding this topic. You are also highly welcomed here to a full day training for sure uh, in Austria. So that's also from my side. If you have questions, send it to us. I really wish you a great day. So then, bye.